Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel with Mole Thoughts. Today we are talking about how good is actually New World. There's a question I see quite a bit in the last few days and what you see here by the way in the background is me playing the game uh, live on stream. Uh, if you want to catch me there you can go to twitch.tv slash chaosmole and now let's answer the question how good is this game? Well before we do that I have a few things to mention. First things first, this game should have come out on August 25th, but got delayed by probably another year. And so with that, what we are seeing here is an early preview, especially because we are actually missing huge chunks of the game. Uh, especially weapon skills. It seems like they have only put like 50% of the weapon in and Unfortunately, that gives the whole game the feeling of, well, something is amiss. Like, I'm not 100% happy with all the weapon choices in the game, so that is missing. But most importantly, what I want to say, I will mention a lot of negative points in this video. But this game has a lot of potential and most importantly, I will offer some solutions to this. So this is not just me being like, oh yeah, this is dumb. Like, I don't, I don't understand why the devs actually did this. It's so dumb. No, I want to offer solutions to the problems at hand because thankfully they're fixable. And so that also means you can clearly see that they put money into this game. This is not just a cash grab. This is not just a game where Amazon was like, oh yeah, let's make an MMO because everybody wants an MMO, right? It makes no sense for this game, but let's make it an MMO. Right, Fallout 76? Right? Yeah. Um, no, that is not the case in this game. It's a game where people actually sat down and were brainstorming what they can do good for this game. So they put actually a good amount of money into this game. Like graphically it looks pretty good. I know that some people say like, oh yeah, it looks a bit outdated. Keep in mind this is an MMO with thousands of people on your screen and that the game runs as well as it does is, well, exciting. Um, keep in mind I have a little bug you will sometimes see when we are entering the town here where unfortunately my PC freezes up for like two or three seconds when I'm reaching certain points in the town. It doesn't make any sense where it happens but it happens in specific points on the town always. So if that happens and you're like, whoa, did the view froze? No, it's unfortunately the game which did freeze up for like a second or two. And it only happens in like certain areas of this particular town. So eh, it's unfortunate, but what can you do? But now let's talk about this game. Um, I was actually kind of surprised by it. Like it has a lot of cool features. It's a fully fledged out MMO with thousands of people, which we don't see that often anymore. Like a lot of MMOs nowadays are, how can I put that? Are more like Destiny-esque, where you are landing in a, in a hub, in a social hub where all the players are. And then the moment you are leaving that social hub, you are basically disconnected from all the players who are not in your group. So that is already pretty cool and gives you a real MMO feeling. And one of the main three features this game has is PvE, crafting, PvP. Or, well, technically realm versus realm versus realm. Or, well, faction versus faction versus faction. Whatever you want to call it. I would just call it PvP. And you know exactly what I mean. So, these are the three main features of this game. And right now, they contradict each other. Like, normally when you have um, multiple features in an MMO or in a game in general, these features work together. They support each other. They try to build upon each other. In this game, they're in their way. It, I know it sounds completely weird when I say that and you would be like, how do you mean that? Well, the problem is really, they put those main features in the game and they didn't really make sure that they click with each other. Like, they exist in their own vacuum, but they don't really support each other, and sometimes they hinder each other even. Let me explain. So, when you are coming to the island, uh, the, 
you basically have nothing on you and the game is like oh yeah dude uh let's do some quest here that you're getting some starter equipment and that you can be on your way and you're getting some good tier 2 equipment with a good like iron weapon and then the game after a few quests is like oh yeah man let, let me let me give you like one of the main parts of this game and that is crafting because let's be honest here look at your equipment it looks horrid like especially your weapon is completely like garbage let's craft you a good weapon and let me show you how that goes and so the game is explaining to you how you craft like your first weapon and when you craft this first weapon it's the same iron sword you just got from the quest and it's like wait but uh, what Wait, I I thought I'm crafting here like the good stuff. Why do I get the same weapon uh, I just got from a quest? When I can just get all the items from a quest, I don't need to craft. See, this is the first contradiction, but it gets even worse. With level 12, you have to decide yourself uh, to choose one of the three factions in the game. Can you skip that? Yes, you can. But let's be honest here, um, because PvP is optional, um, you, you maybe want to do that. So you're joining a faction. In my case, I choose the Syndicate. And you are unlocking the faction NPC. And that faction NPC is offering you the best items in the game. Or at least like the top tier items, like epic named weapons. And you are gaining those weapons by gathering specific currencies for that faction, and then you can turn it on for the turn it in for the weapons or for the equipment, which again contradicts the whole idea that you want to do crafting at a certain point, because you can just now harvest the points to get the stuff you need. But you might say, yeah, well, but that is faction npc so that probably means you have to do pvp right and pvp is high risk high reward because you can get killed quite a bit so it makes sense and the answer is no unfortunately um the faction npc is also offering you pve quests and yes those pve quests give you less points than the pvp quest uh, let me give you an example to understand why this is a huge problem. So in PvP, you can take a quest where you have to patrol a certain um, area in the game or multiple areas in the game, and that will give you 340 points. And then there are PvE quests with, with um, just between 40 and 60 points. Haha, -ha, so you see, PvP gives you more points. Yeah, let me explain. So in PvP, you will be sent from the city to point A, from point A to point B, from point B to point C, and from point C to the city again. And you have to stand around on those areas, completely PvP flagged, so everybody can attack you, for a hundred seconds each. So in total, running around those patrol areas and then also getting safely back to the town will take you about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, here's the caveat. If you are getting killed in any shape or form on this quest, this quest will fail and you have to start anew completely anew it doesn't matter even like and this is one of the things the game doesn't mention which happened to me um i had all the points covered a b and c i was going back to the town and five meters in front of the town a high level character come come by killed me i had no chance and i had to do the quest anew so basically 20 minutes of my time just wasted and let me talk about the pve quest the PvE quests give you, as I said, 60 points, sometimes 40. And sometimes you have quests where you have multiple quests in an area. So like, kill five wolves, now give me five pelts of that wolf. And so you can basically just two quests in five minutes, which will give you 120 points. Which quest do you choose? Well, it's pretty simple, right? You're choosing the PvE quest. So the game is teaching you again that PvE is much safer and much better to do, and you can still get 
the best item in the game. And this is what I meant with the game is contradicting itself itself with its own features. It's like, yeah, PvP, high risk, high reward, but why would you do it when you can just get the um, when you can get just the resources by while well, doing PvE or well, doing crafting? But then again, there's the question again: Why would you do crafting? Because especially with crafting, keep in mind at the NPC, you can just buy the flame destroyer sword for a certain amount of port. Uh, points and it will give you exactly what you want for crafting you have to get all the resources together and then you have to craft the item multiple times and hope for the best stats so begs the question again why would why would i do crafting for hours when i can just put basically in the same amount of hours and will get a guaranteed good item out of this so you might not say, okay, well, that sounds like as if the PvE is in the way. Do you say PvE should be removed from the game? No. No. Because I know especially how much people actually love PvE, and it's good to have an option, right? But the problem is right now, PvE came clearly into the game much later. Much, much, much later than everything else. Like, I know that in the alpha phase, like a, a year ago, PvE and questing wasn't even really a thing. So they added that on top of it, and you can feel it. So what they have to do, and now we are talking about solutions here, and not just complaining, but solution-wise, what they could do is let, PV, let PvE in. Don't, don't take it out. PvE is completely fine. But change the rewards I can get through PvE. Like, don't give me the high-tier items directly. Give me crafting resources. Do the same thing with PvP. You don't have to give me the Mega Inferno Sword with points. Just give me rare crafting materials I need to craft that item. Because with that, crafting is important again. That is a solution to the problem. Like the same goes with items which are dropped by enemies. Unfortunately, this is another PVE problem. You can have like tons of chests on um, on the map where you can just get good items out of it. You can just kill tons of enemies who then have a chance to drop like certain items and remove that. Give them resources. And then people have to use that for crafting. Because right now, the biggest problem is that crafting always seems to be the more expensive, worst choice. And PvP is too much high risk, not enough reward. And in the end, everyone will go back to PvE. So what you have to do is make it so that everything ends up in crafting which is like a huge part of this game anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter much. And the PvP is still high, um, high risk, high reward, but also give resources for crafting. And I think that will make the whole thing much better. Speaking of PvP, there's one last thing we have to talk about here. Um, PvP right now is not a lot of fun. It could be. But high-level characters destroy that fun. Because there is no reason for a high-level character not to come back to the low-level areas to kill people in PvP. A, it helps their factions anyway and gives them points, so they always win. B, even if they are just coming back for PvE areas, it makes sense for them because the chests in the game respawn. So every few hours or minutes, you can go back to a certain area and farm chests, right? Problem is, the chests are bound to your character level. So even if you are in the level 10 area with a level 40 character, you get 40, level 40 items out of the chests, which is like, wh wait, what? 
makes also the farming so much more easier, which then explains why wouldn't you do crafting if you could just, you know, farm the boxes in low level areas and another problem they have. But going back to PvP, there are so many reasons for a high end PvP player to come back to a low end area and kill the low bobs that people will end up to deactivate PvP. They will just farm in PvE till they are high level enough, till they are strong enough. And then, well, they will do some PvP afterwards. Which is unfortunate because this game is very much telling you right at level 12, it's time for PvP. You want to do PvP. It is so much fun. It is so much like high risk, high reward. But the fun just ends when you're getting ganked by multiple high-end characters. That's like, especially because we had enough games in the past who actually did something like, as I said, just remove the level-based boxes, make it so that at a certain level, I would say between five and eight levels, you don't get any points for your faction anymore if you were killing a low-player character or that you cannot even attack them as long as they are not attacking you. Like they, they are enough stops developers can put in the game to prevent ganking from low level characters. Because if you want to make sure that your PVP dies out and maybe even your heavily PVP focused game dies out, you give the gankers and the griefers what they want. And that's the last thing you want to do. And believe me, I have seen that in so many games in the past who try to focus on PvP. It's it's really no fun. So work on this, Amazon. Like, I gave you a few good tips here. And you can, of course, use your own stuff. Like, that's up to you. But what I can say, and this is basically the TLDR of this whole lengthy video, it is good that they postpone this game, that they take themselves a lot of time here with like nine to 12 months even, and that they actually want to like make it better and actually want to fix it. Because it is relatively bug free, <laughs> does he say and shows like a graphic bug on the screen right now. But no, the game is relatively bug free. It's run it runs well like even with all the characters like you can clearly see that they actually put a lot of money and thought and time into this game this is not a cash grab this is a good game with a lot of potential which unfortunately has a lot of issues right now on a gameplay level which are fixable they are clearly fixable so i hope that will happen and if that happens I will gladly come back to the game. I enjoyed my time in New World. Um, I'm actually kind of sad that the um, the preview program ends very soon. And I really hope that the beta starts very soon that, that, so that uh, people can give more feedback. And yeah, if, if they are fixing all the things, this game could become really good and a lot of people might jump onto this game. So... Let's make it happen. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more gaming news, analyzers, and, well, playthroughs and gameplay, uh, we are playing Wasteland 3 right now on the channel on twitch.tv slash chaosmall. And you can catch me there from Monday to Friday, starting at 8 a.m. ET with Mole in the Morning and Gaming News. And then, well, video games. So till then, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day and see you then. Bye-bye.